Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I've got a couple different things for you. One, a lot of people have been asking me to go through kind of a breakdown of my pantry. You know, people want to get their pantries ready for the end of this summer, into, uh, going into the fall and winter of this year, and I'm going to be going through that. But first, I want to let you guys know that uh, one of my favorite uh, channel hosts, Hoople's Cat, is posting a video that is kind of a rebuttal to a video that I did recently, where I talk a little bit about uh, vaccines and why I personally have chosen not to jump in and get a vaccine for COVID yet. You know, I said in the video that I felt like things were still kind of pre uh, preliminary. I wanted to kind of let more information uh, you know, develop uh, going forward. You know, in the future, I might decide to go the vaccine route. And there are certainly people, I think, in the world right now where it makes more sense than others. But for me personally, I felt like it wasn't a, a good decision for me. And uh, Hoople's Cat uh, wanted to talk about to people like myself, I know that a lot of you guys are kind of similar to me in that regard, uh, about kind of his take on that. I highly respect Hoople's Cat's opinion, even though we don't always agree on everything all the time. That's a good thing, uh, because that's the way we learn from each other. Uh, so he's posting that video. Now, uh, down in the description of this video below, I have a link to his channel. Now, I can't link directly to the video because at the time that I'm recording this, I'm just about to leave on a camping trip with my boy. And right now, at the moment when you're seeing this, if you're watching it at the time of the release, I'm not home yet. So so I, you know, don't know exactly what the link is to his video, so I can't put a link down there. But go to his channel. It's one of the more recent videos. I'm sure he'll title it, title it appropriately. Uh, you know, some kind of like VR to practices boneheaded uh, approach to, to uh, you know, COVID vaccines or whatever. But I'd highly recommend that you guys watch it. I know that recently I did a video where I was talking about the idea of being open-minded, of being open to the idea that you might, wow, there's a hawk that just flew over my head. I saw it in the reflection of a car over here. I don't know if you guys saw that. <laughs> oh, it's right, it's right up there. Let's, let's take a little break for the hawk. There it is. Is it circling? There we go. That's not unusual around here, but it's kind of cool that it's happening while I'm doing a video. Anyway. Okay, so uh, I did a video recently where I talk about the importance of being open to the idea of being incorrect about things. That's the way that we all learn, you know, if you're open-minded to things. I don't always uh, believe that I have all the answers to everything. That's why I'm always listening to other people's opinions, and that's why I'm always questioning my own. And this is a great opportunity to do that, and it's a great source coming from Hoople's Cat. Again, like I said, I highly rec uh, respect his opinion, and I would highly recommend that if you're not already a subscriber to his channel, check him out. He's been in invaluable uh, to me and my family during the pandemic with lots of really helpful uh, you know, tips and advice. Uh, he is in the medical field by training, so he just knows a lot about this stuff to begin with, and I'd highly recommend you check him out. Okay, so do that, but before you do that, Let's go inside and I want to walk you guys through my pantry. I know, like I said, a lot of people have asked me kind of, uh, you know, getting into like the nuts and bolts of what's actually in there. I've done some kind of pantry overview videos, but in this one, I'm going to go through like, you know, shelf by shelf and, you know, not talk ad nauseum. Uh, about any one uh, specific thing, but really go through, uh, you know, what I've got in there and it might prompt you guys to think, hey, that's something I like eating and wow, if that does well in a pantry and it lasts a while, maybe you guys might want to add that to your pantry as well. I've been uh, building my pantry over the past uh, decade or two or, or so. Uh, there's been trial, there's been error, and the result is what I have today. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, it's the uh, accumulated knowledge of what I've built up over the past, uh, you know, 10 to 20 years of trying things and finding out some things work really well in pantries and other things not so great. So let's go in there and we can check that out if you guys are interested, but don't forget down in the description below, check out Hoople's Cat's content because uh, he's really knowledgeable and I think it's really great to expose ourselves to different points of view because, you know, I don't think we have all the answers right now and I hope that right now today, I'm not as smart as I'm ever going to be. I, I hope that I find out in the future and near future at that, you know, that there's things that I believe right now that were wrong. And I hope next week I'm smarter than I am right now. That's it. Let's go inside. 
Okay, so here we are inside. But before I get going with uh, talking about the pantry, I want to let you guys know if you're curious as to why this is not an Alien Invasion episode, it's just because we have not reached our funding goals to release two episodes per month. My goal is to get one episode on the first Friday of the month, one episode on the third Friday of the month, which would be today. But again, we still haven't reached those funding goals. It takes a lot of time and effort to put these uh, episodes together for you guys, and the only way I can really do that is with you guys' help. Now, there's two different ways that you guys can do that. One is the old classic way. If you go to patreon.com slash praxis prepper, you can become a supporting member over there, and not only do you unlock two episodes a month for everyone if we reach our funding goals, but whether or not we reach the funding goals or not, you get instant access to all the episodes as soon as they get produced. Uh, as soon as I finish editing each episode, it gets released over at patreon.com slash praxis prepper, and at the time of this recording, I think there's like six episodes already available for instant viewing. Of course, one of them's one that you guys have already seen because it's already released. But all the episodes are over there. There's more that you guys haven't seen. And you get instant access to all of them, you know, if you become a supporting member. Again, for as little as $1 a month. The other thing that you get is if you are a member during uh, a moment when I'm releasing an episode, I check to see who's a supporting member at that moment, and I put everyone's name in the end credits as a way of thanking you guys because I honestly couldn't do this without your help. Uh, if that... Uh, idea of going to patreon.com slash practice prepper is just completely like uh, horrific to you and you don't want to take that route at all there is a completely free way that you can help me and that is that i have a second channel that i've been really working on for a long time uh putting in an awful lot of time over on that channel it's a kids educational channel with alphabets videos foreign languages colors all this kind of stuff i built it for my uh, for my boy when he was learning all that stuff and there was a big deficit of this type of thing on youtube there's a lot of kid stuff but there's not a lot of variety I, and this channel is all about variety. There are 12,000 videos over there. So it's kind of like something for everyone. Uh, you know, if you want to, you know, learn, uh, you know, the French alphabet and you like, I don't know, poodles. Although, honestly, I haven't done poodles yet, but uh, if you like uh, killer whales, uh, you can uh, learn the French alphabet with killer whales or mermaid dogs or, you know, vampires, all these different things. And I've been having a hard time getting it monetized because YouTube uh, really only rewards channels that have a lot of subscribers. And who the hell would subscribe to a channel like that? That's a channel you search, you use, but you don't subscribe to it. And the other thing is YouTube only rewards if you have a lot of uh, long videos of people watching hours and hours and, hour, and hours of you like playing a video game or something like that. YouTube rewards channels that have long videos. All these chan all the videos I have on that channel, they're like two minutes long. So it's really hard to get the hours up. So if you guys can pop over there, there's a link down below. Become a subscribe. Uh, become a subscriber to that. You don't even have to click notifications or anything. Just subscribe. I gotta get. I have to get to a thousand subscribers. And if you have the ability and interest, we could use some watch hours. And we've got some long play playlists. You could have them play in the background of your computer. If you guys can help me to do that, get us to the thousand uh, subscribers we need. Get us to the watch hour uh, level that we need, so we can just get it monetized. It would help me out. And if you guys can help me out, I will be happy to start releasing two episodes of Alien Invasion per month. Enough about that, let's go to the pantry. A lot of people have been talking to me about pantries. First, Amber is on camera right now, very generously. She's uh, uh, sharing her time because I, we're gonna be moving around a lot here. And Amber, if you wanna kinda come down this way and just get a general sense, you stay back that way and just get a general sense of the size here. Now this is the second, this, actually this is the third pantry that I've ever built. I built one at my first homestead, I built one at the temporary house, and then I built this one, and this one, uh, it was constructed based on my learning uh, experience from the other ones. And you can see uh, there's uh, two shelves on either side. I kind of modeled it on a grocery store. Didn't want to reinvent the wheel there. Uh, this side has a 28 inch deep shelf so I can fit these whole uh, tubs in. And I designed it around the tubs. I figured out what kind of uh, containers I was going to put on here and I designed around that. This one is not 28 inches deep. If it was, it'd be like out here and we'd be like you know, walking through our pantry like that. You couldn't get anything in or out. So I had to kind of choose. It'd be great if I could have 28 inches on either side. Uh, but this side is 14 inches and that was designed specifically for things like this. These are cases of pasta sauce. Lots of cases of things. This will actually, no, that's about as far back as it goes. Oh no, it's hidden up in the back. Lots of cases of things are either 28 inches or 14 inches. So I designed the shelves around that, if you guys are thinking about designing your own pantry. But let's talk about what's on the pantry, because that's kind of what's important to a lot of you guys at this point. And there's a lot of different things. Now, I mentioned outside that I have had a lot of experience with things that work well in a pantry and things that don't work well in a pantry. Uh, there are some things that you would think would just store just fine, and I'll give you a quick example of that. Things like peanuts. That sounds fine. Uh, 
things like cashews, that sounds just fine. Well, one of those stores really, really well, and one of those horribly. It, it, it never works out very well, I'll, you know, although uh, I'll mention I do have one of the ones that doesn't store very, very well on these shelves here. Uh, peanuts don't store very well. They go rancid after, you know, maybe a year or so, or even less. So you, get, you buy a bunch of peanuts, and they tend to go rancid. Cashews, on the other hand, I have cashews that are years old. It, it, it's unconscionable how old some of the cashews I have on these shelves that we're still eating are. But they last and they last and they last. And that's something that I've learned through experience. So I'm going to share some of that as we go through. We're going to uh, look up at the top here. Now, uh, I will say that I have not done any great organizing of this uh, space. I mean, it's it's mildly organized. You know, we're, we're just in the early stages of kind of going through it. But what is on here is all, you know, pretty well-researched stuff. We've got canned fruits. Up on the top here, uh, there's uh, canned peaches, canned uh, pineapple. Uh, this is a kind of a canned mixed fruit kind of thing. I found all that stuff tends to work out pretty well. I know that people uh, critique the idea of any kind of canned food because they'll be like, well, the vitamin C is just going to break down in there. Okay, yeah, sure, but you know, it's still roughage. There's still, I mean, it still has kind of an acidy taste. There's still some kind of nutrition in there. Granted, when I eat my fruit, I like to eat fresh fruit that I'm getting from the stores, but if the stores burn down and they're overrun by bird flu infected clown zombies, at least you got this. And you know, even if it only retains 1% of the vitamin C, that's more than zero. So I found, I've had some pretty good success with that type of thing. Uh, I've also got salsa. Salsa seems like it has a really long uh, shelf life. Anything that's acidic tends to jar, uh, get canned really well and have a really nice long uh, shelf life. So things like um, salsa and over here we've got pasta sauces uh, like marinara sauce over here these things tend to last a long time and have a really good uh, shelf life I'm not going to uh, talk about every single thing in here um, but you know just talk, kind of talk about the highlight stuff obviously here we have a lot of bottled juices now I'm, I'm going to uh, be really forthright about the fact that I don't have an extremely uh, long amount of experience with storing this stuff long term. Uh, the longest I've ever had juice is maybe, you know, pushing a year or so. I really try to cycle through it. It might last longer than that, but I can't confirm or deny that. The reason I have so much of it here at the moment is, you know, just ahead of COVID with all the shortages and everything, I was just like, you know, let's just get a bunch of it in and, you know, just make sure that we have it on hand. Uh, some of the older ones here would be these and the expiration on this says that it is well this is uh, expired by about three months and I've been having these and they're still good that's one thing about expiration dates is that they are you know I think the best way to interpret them is a best buy date now that doesn't mean that something's not going to be toxic if you eat it like one day after expiration but that also doesn't mean something's not going to be toxic if you eat it before expiration I mean, there's plenty of like food recalls on different things that like you just bought it yesterday at the grocery store and there's a recall on it because it's got like you know salmonella or something like that in there so not every juice bottle is always going to be the same you know some are going to last longer some not as long and you got to use your uh, you know your judgment and your taste buds to some degree to kind of figure out some of this stuff but from my experience uh you know things that are, are past expiration by even up to a year I've, I've never personally had any issue with that but that doesn't mean you won't so always use your, your common sense when you're looking at stuff all right what else we got here we've got juice boxes uh in tetra packs tetra pack uh, stuff does tend to last forever. I have a lot of experience with Tetra Pak stuff. I'm not a fan of it because it's not very recyclable. It's like a lasagna of plastic and a foil and paper and plastic and foil and paper. It's very unrecyclable. I think there's like four places in the entire United States that even claim that they can recycle the stuff and I'm kind of skeptical of that. So I'm not a fan of it from an environmental standpoint, but in terms of like keeping stuff fresh, it does seem like it works pretty well. Uh, I mentioned we have uh, marinara sauce up here. Uh, there is, uh, you know, some spices and things up here. A lot, a lot of uh, tomato products, crushed tomatoes. I think those are great uh, ways of getting uh, vitamin C into your diet. I know, you know, it's not as good as getting it fresh out of your garden, but it's something that's oftentimes better than nothing. And, uh, you know, get it from the garden when you can, but it's nice to have it when you don't. Uh, this is kind of a nice product, especially for vegetarians. It's refried bean mix. It's dry. Um, I almost... I, I, I never use this just to make refried bean, uh, you know, mix stuff. But what I do use this for is whenever I do beans, oftentimes you'll put them in extra water so you don't accidentally burn them. And then once you're ready to use them, if you add a little bit of the refried bean mix, it will kind of soak up the rest of the water and allow you to be finished pretty quickly uh, with whatever you were cooking. Um, 
Uh, also in the pantry here, we've got um, uh, some things that they're not food related, but they're nice to keep cool. I've got sunblock here. I've got different topical uh, ointments and things of, of that nature. I like to keep those in a cool place too, which brings me to the idea of what, what's the temperature in here? Well, the temperature in here right now is too hot. We're still trying to work out uh, the uh, keeping the uh, environment in here uh, to be nice and amiable, to keeping everything, you know, lasting a long time. The pantry that I have the most experience with, the one at my first homestead, we were there for about 10 years. That one was always about 60 degrees, and that's what I'm basing a lot of my durational knowledge on, is that one. The, this pantry here is almost 70 degrees. We gotta get that temperature down. If you make your own pantry, you wanna make sure you keep the temperature as cool as you can and as dry as you can. We have a dehumidifier here uh, that we're using to keep uh, things dry. And Amber, if you wanna come over here, uh, this is one thing that we're gonna use to just make sure that we can force things to stay cool. I installed an air conditioner up there. I've never owned an air conditioner in my entire life, but honestly, you know, you need to have a way to make sure that your pantry stays cool because you don't want to have that kind of food spoilage. And I'm just going to walk over in this direction, hit a little bit more of this kind of stuff. We've got soda and stuff. That's not like necessarily a uh, survival item, although it's fun if you have kids. Although ginger ale here, which is what we have the majority of, is really nice if you get ill. It's, it's uh, I'm I'm not sure if this is common knowledge with everyone, but if you uh, do candy ginger, like crystallized ginger or ginger ale, if you're ever nauseous, it really knocks it out really quickly. It, it's it's strong, like the kind of medicine that you'd be like afraid to overuse because it's like, it's an instant effect uh, if you're ever nauseous and if you uh, drink some ginger ale or uh, eat some crystallized ginger. And I've seen that work very well, you know, both with illness, but also like car sickness and stuff. In fact, in my uh, EDC pack that I carry out with me all the time, bringing on road trips with my boy, there's crystallized ginger in there and I've used it more than one time. We've got olive oil on, uh, up on these shelves. I have never had an issue with olive oil spoiling in these metal containers. I did once buy it in a five gallon uh, pail and it spoiled in the five gallon pail. The metal containers seem like they work better. Salad dressing here. Got a bunch of these. Uh, this one here is pretty old. We're getting to the end of this one's life. This one expired three years ago. I just opened one of these the other day. They're absolutely fine. It seems to uh, to me, I, I don't know if it matters, this is Greek dressing. Uh, it seems like sa a salad dressing lasts pretty well. I think it's probably because you got the oil and you also have kind of a mix of vinegar in there. Uh, like I said, acidic things seem like they, they have a better shelf life. They last longer. Uh, coming across here, peanut butter. I mentioned peanuts tend to go rancid. I've never had an issue with peanut butter going rancid. So we stock a bunch of peanut butter. It's a great way of getting protein into your body. Again, especially if you're uh, you know, a vegetarian. We here at this house are mostly vegetarians. I eat a little bit of uh, you know, uh, birds and a little bit of fish now and then. Uh, but um, you know, mostly we do things in a vegetarian way. And that's a great way of storing stuff. Uh, nothing goes bad like dead animal cadavers. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier to store uh, uh, vegetarian protein than it is to store uh, you know, meats and things. Uh, you can freeze meats, but that requires energy. You can salt meats, but then you get this really salty kind of thing uh, you know, on the other end. Uh, vegetarian eating is really great for long-term food storage. Baked beans here, lots of condiments and things. Uh, this is kind of a nut mix that we have, you know. It's possible, like, you get one thing that works for you. Like I said, cashews. They work really great. They store for a long time. But you don't want to just get cashews. Let's, let's say you, you like cashews and you're like, okay, well, that'll solve my nut problem. I'm just going <laughs> to... Does that sound like off-color? Solving someone's nut problem. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, you know, it's like, well, I want to have some kind of a nut for long-term storage. And, uh, you know, cashews, uh, you know, Praxis said that they last, so I'm going to buy all cashews. It's good to have variety because, you know, uh, when it gets down to it, like if you're ever in a situation where you're kind of surviving off of your preps, you want to have some variety in there. I think a lot of people learned that during COVID uh, when they didn't have a lot of variety. And they were like, man, you know, I've been eating some rations, but these kind of suck. You know, I want to I diversify things up. That's what we got a lot of condiments. Mustard, I find, last frickin' forever. Ketchup also, it's got the high acid content. We've got pickles here, we've got olives in, in uh, containers. I mentioned that I do eat fish. All this stuff is sardines. I, you know, I used to think that sardines were really, I'm sorry Amber, Amber's fully vegetarian, so this is really offensive to her, <laughs> she's operating camera. Um, I used to think sardines were really awful, because when I was a little kid I tried one, and I was like, that's horrible, like, it's something like old men ate, it was just like, like liver or kidney stones or whatever old people eat. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a lot of not 
particularly young viewers of this day. I'm talking about like old world people. It's like, oh, we've been uh, setting up pickled tongue and, and uh, pickled, uh, <laughs> you know, pig hoof. You know, yeah. pe people from like the old world ate some pretty crazy shit. And sardines, I thought, was one of those things. But I've tried this brand of sardines and, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like tuna fish a little bit, except without the mercury in the PCBs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you're uh, maybe wanting to get into the small oily fish, which are quite healthy for you, um, I would recommend Wild Planet as a brand for those. And I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, other than, you know, they saved sardines for me. Anyway, those last a long time. I'm going camping uh, this week, and I'm bringing some that are expired by three years. We'll find out about that. Uh, but I, I've had a couple of these, you know, at least a year or two past expiration. No big deal at all. We've got other uh, nuts up here, pistachios. I've never had a problem with pistachios going bad, uh, but I've never eat, eaten those, you know, maybe one year past expiration. Um, other kind of snack foods. Again, if you've got kids in your family, it's nice to have fun stuff. I bought a bunch of these potato stick things, not because I think Oots is some kind of like a health food brand, but just as a way of having like fun food. And there's a lot of calories in these, and there's some salt in these, and they can give you some energy if uh, you're feeling low energy. Same kind of thing with granola bars. Uh, I buy a lot of Cliff Bars, and I've never had any of these go rancid on me, but I've never eaten any of them more than maybe two years out of expiration. Bunch of different flavors here to kind of keep shaking things up. Let's kind of push back this way a little bit. We've got uh, other things uh, I do keep in here is vitamins and medicines. You want to keep that stuff kind of uh, cool. You know, a lot of people keep that in their their um, bathroom, uh, but you know, it's like the bathroom that's warm with showers and everything. You want to keep medicines cool to have them last a long time. We've got immune boosting things in here, echinacea, different kinds of zinc, all that kind of stuff. Um, more immune boosting stuff. I like way like crazy bottle the zinc elderberry stuff like just just prior to covid uh, and then like the price on these things doubled i could have like sold these that thing for and like made like several hundred dollars profit later on um you know again we have uh, more of the juices and things let's go down to this lower level here uh again more fun foods you know it, don't skimp on this kind of stuff if you're getting the important stuff grab a little bit of this it, you know e even if you don't have kids in your family you know, if, if you were hunkered down with the aliens all clawing at your windows after a while, I think it would just feel nice to eat some food out of a teddy bear. You know, I think that would just kind of, it would just warm up your day. So, you know, think about yourself, too. Uh, here's, some, uh, here's where we kept a lot of the medicines. Here are a bunch of cough drops. We uh, we boned up on those uh, pre-COVID in case any of us got us. Really, when COVID came, came through, we were all planning on getting it. I mean, that was our plan, was it like, you know, we're eventually going to get it. So far, we've, uh, uh, you know, avoided that, but... Uh, yeah, we really prepared for the idea that we're going to fail to prevent it and we're going to get it ourselves. Let's go down. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to hold off on the lower shelves uh, until the end. Let's kind of pop up here, Amber, if you want to come over here. Uh, very top up there, we've got a bunch of soy milk. Now, I've got, now I'm going to use the ladder. Instead of being an idiot, like I usually am in my video, I'm crawling up a wall. I'm going to use an actual ladder. If you have a tall pantry, this is a nice uh, asset to have. Uh, we've got a bunch of cases of soy milk up here. Uh, these are just things, uh, Tetra Pak, uh, soy milk, rice milk, things of that nature. Uh, these last an enormously long time. I've eaten a lot of, uh, drank a lot of this stuff way past expiration. Uh, and uh, it's just like uh, shelf-stable milk. It just, it lasts a while and it's nice to have. Here's another shelf-stable milk. It's powdered milk. I um, uh, keep a lot of things in these, uh, these old wino jugs, the like gallon of wine things. I, I've never actually drank wine out of these. I get them from recycle stations, but uh, they work really well for storing grains or chocolate chips or whatever. Uh, obviously, a really important asset is wine, and that is good either for yourself or as a trade item. You know, sometimes people want to trade uh, for some food. Uh, also up on the top shelf here is just uh, more snack food. Cheese macaroni for you know the boy is is always a great thing. That stuff seems to last a long time. We've got chocolate and chocolate. Uh, chocolate has a lot of benefits. One, again, it's a, a useful trade item. If you were in a situation where you wanted to trade for something, if people haven't had candy in a while, it's like people get the munchies, and uh, you know, chocolate's going to be an item people are going to be coveting. Uh, but in addition to that, I mean, for yourself, it has caffeine in it, and caffeine can uh, be kind of like a painkiller. It can keep you alert and awake if you got to watch those bird-infected clown zombies coming up to your house all night. So there, there can be some benefits to that. Moving on. 
down here we've got a bunch of protein powders and these are all uh, vegetarian protein powders. I'd really boned up on these prior to COVID just to have some way of getting protein into you know our bodies so that we wouldn't suffer from the lack thereof of that. Uh, this seems like a, pre a pretty high quality one. It does have stevia in it. I've got the, the jury's out, in my view, on Stevia. I just don't know that much about it. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, it's better than having a bunch of sugar, at least at the moment I feel that way. Um, if you know any different, let me know, unless you're crazy. Uh, over here, uh, more alcohol. Over here, and again, that is uh, something that can be a, a trade item. Uh, but it's also helpful, like, uh, if you were ever sick, uh, you know, ha having, like, a little shot of whiskey, if you have, like, a tremendous cough, can kind of... Uh, numb your throat and make it so that you can uh, get to sleep and you know getting sleep if you're ill is an important uh, you know way of, of making yourself feel better um, that would be something I would uh, occasionally do whenever I get a cold or something like that and like at the end of the day and I just really need to knock myself out just have like a little bit of whiskey and it would uh, you know get me to sleep and then you know I feel better the next day uh, since I've been doing N95 masking with uh, you know during cold and flu season no one's getting sick anymore so maybe I have more whiskey than I'll ever need. If we can keep the masks in supply, I, I feel like I'm going to continue doing the masking during cold and flu season because the past two years have been really nice not getting sick because we were totally used to getting sick every year with having like a kid. He goes out, brings all the germs back, and then everybody gets sick. Um, so maybe I've got more of that than I need, but I can use it for trade. A shelf full of pasta. Pasta lasts a while. One danger with pasta though, uh, and it's pretty obvious, is these boxes they're not hermetically sealed in any way. Like, it, they, anything can crawl in there. So if you are storing these in an environment where there could be things like weevils or whatever that you don't want crawling around on your pasta, uh, you know, consider that. You may want to take the stuff and put it into a secondary container. At least maybe put it in a bin, and here is a bin of pasta uh, stuff in here. Uh, so you, you got to kind of think about that, uh, you know, because these containers, as they arrive, are not going to keep uh, bugs and things like that out. We're going to talk about bugs in just a little bit too, about things that you know might get into your grains. Uh, here's a box of tea. I'm a big fan of tea, and tea also again has that caffeine, uh, so that it will uh, you know help keep you alert and awake and keeping the the zombies away. This is uh, a bag full of things that I don't plan on personally consuming. Uh, one big idea that a lot of people have in the prepping and, prepare, and preparedness community is the idea that not all the food that we are stacking is necessarily for ourselves. I mean, we're human beings. We have compassion for other people. If we were ever in a situation where the people around me, people I know, neighbors or whoever, is in a situation where they, their family, their kids are hungry, I want to be able to give something to them. Uh, that said, I don't want to be giving them my, like, imported organic basmati rice, so I bought some cheap stuff. Now, I mean, that might seem kind of crass, like, like, this is good enough for you guys, but, you know, as an alternative to not having anything uh, on hand, because that was cheap, I was able to get a bunch of it, uh, I think people would appreciate that, and I want to be able to do that. Now, obviously, that opens up the can of worms where it's like, once you start letting people know you have stuff, they're never going to leave you alone, whatever, you got to cross that bridge when you get to it, but I think it's nice to have the ability to give something to people because we're human beings, we care about other people, at least we should unless we're like demented monsters. And I, I, I didn't want to be in a situation in the future where I have to choose between giving food to my boy, to my family, or to someone else. So I wanted to be able to, as much as I can, do both. So some of the things I have here in the pantry are for potentially giving away, trading. If you are going to give things away to people, sometimes it's good to, you know, make it kind of a trade so that uh, people don't feel like it's just a handout. Uh, I think that for most people that makes them feel better. Like, you know, you could say, well, I need a little bit of help doing this. You know, could you give me a hand with that? And, I, and I, you know, I can get you guys some food or whatever. You know, I think people feel better if they work for what they, they get. But also it makes it so that people know if they want to get food from you, you know, there's got to be like a back and forth there. More things. Uh, popcorn. That's a pretty good prep. Um, in the past, I'd had some pr some trouble with popcorn not lasting very long, but I think that that was a bit of a fluke. Uh, uh, since that one incident, I've I've never had popcorn go bad on me, and I've had it you know again a couple years past expiration, uh, no problem at all. And uh, popcorn, I feel, is a pretty good prep, uh, and you know it's one of those comfort foods where people like you know they just enjoy. Uh, you know, having that. In the back of this one with the uh, popcorn is some coffee. Uh, it's unground coffee beans. 
I don't drink coffee, but it's a good trade item. So I, I was able to get those at a good price, and it's something that I could trade with people or give away to people or whatever. Uh, these are all uh, baking things. Uh, there's uh, baking chocolate and cocoa and honey. Honey is a really great uh, uh, long-term storage item. In ancient Egypt, people have found honey that was still viable in tombs. At least I've heard that, and I believe that it's true because it sounds really awesome. Um, uh, anyway, honey lasts a long time. Is you know, once you open it, you know, uh, you know, you can get junk in there, and you got to watch out for that. But in terms of like once it's been sealed and everything, honey lasts a long time. It's a great source of complex sugars. Uh, we got a bunch of dried fruit here. It's a whole bin of dried fruit. It's super. Dried fruit is really heavy. But, uh, in here we have goji berries and dried mango and dried cranberries and raisins and all sorts of things in there. Uh, dried fruit, again, is a great way of getting nutrients into you. Uh, we've been buying a lot from this Anna and Sarah company. Uh, it's organic and high quality and tastes good. Uh, these are apricots, and these are kind of more of a cautionary tale. These are super old. I, I can't even tell you how old these are. Uh, they've, got to, they've got to be coming up on a decade old. Um, and I've, I took them from the original bag, put them into these, uh, these containers, and every once in a while, can you see that? Yeah. They get a little bit of mold. This one, I, 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 I saw this bit of mold a couple weeks ago. I think I might pull those pieces out. Obviously, my, my family doesn't eat apricots really that much. Um, I'd like it if we did, but um, we haven't been, and, and that's the result. I, I, I think, I feel bad, you know, not, not using the food, but it's like I'm not going to shove food down people's throats, and nobody, nobody likes it. I, my boy liked them for a little while, and I bought a bunch of them, and then he decided he didn't like them anymore. I never much cared for them. Okay, other things that we have here. Uh, let's just kind of double back here. Um, this is something that's kind of important. This is, you know, just uh, seasonings, dressings, uh, marinades, things of that nature. If you are stacking a bunch of food, you got a bunch of rice and beans, you're not going to want to just eat rice and beans without anything, without salt or flavors or whatever. Um, you know, it's nice to have that kind of stuff to add to it so you're not puking up this horrible tasting mush that might have calories for you but tastes like crap and you know you're not going to want to keep it down. Uh, some other things we have here, we've got uh, some condensed milk, evaporated milk uh, in cans. I've had pretty good success with these. How far past expiration are these? This one is five years past expiration. Uh, I bought a whole case of these guys and one of them Clearly had a problem. Once I opened it up, it was like, whew, well, no, that one's not good anymore. Uh, but the vast majority of those cans, I've gone through, I think, uh, three quarters of them at this point, haven't had any problems with them. So those things tend to uh, seem like they last pretty long in the metal cans. We get a bunch of Gatorade. It's not something that I eat. Uh, um, you know, well, nobody would eat it. You'd have to do a Gatorade challenge if you're going to eat it. Um, uh, it's not something that I drink. Uh, we bought a bunch of Gatorade, again, pre-COVID. We were planning on the idea that, you know, we would get it. It's a good way of getting electrolytes into your body. It's also a good way of getting artificial colors and flavors into your body, which isn't something I'm all that, that keen on. But, you know, if you are just feeling like crap and you can't keep stuff down, Gatorade is a way, way of getting some of those electrolytes into your body. So I bought a bunch of these... Uh, powders and and they can be mixed up and hopefully we pray we'll never have to use them <laughs> so uh what else we got here um uh we've got uh you know some chips and things again just keeping things fun uh for the family um uh cereals uh cheerios uh, they tend to last a while cornflakes tend to last a while uh and i keep them in these uh in these tubs just because you know i when i this is worth Mentioning when I buy a box of Cheerios, I don't keep it in the box. I take the bag out, put a little, put the year on it, say what's in it, and uh, and then put them in here. You can store a lot more bags into something like this if you take them out of the boxes, because the boxes, we all know, it's mostly empty airspace. Although the same could be true of the, <laughs> the bags as well. Uh, we've got vitamins here. This whole area is vitamins. Uh, again, that's a, a that's important because if you're not getting Ideal nutrition during uh, you know a difficult time. It's nice to at least have some supplements, and you can get some of that into your diet, so you're not not like dying of. Uh, I was gonna say dying of scabies. Yeah. What's the vitamin C deficient? Scurvy. So you're not dying of scurvy or whatever. Um, yeah, you don't die of scabies. I hope that'd be horrible. Uh, this is dental stuff. Toothpaste, toothbrushes, dental rinse. I'm not gonna eat it, but uh, this is all stuff 
that you want to kind of keep uh, cool also. More snacks and things, again, I can't say enough about that. Don't just do rice, beans, and the boring stuff. Have some fun stuff too. Uh, ramen noodles are a great way of kind of having a base uh, for any meal. You know, if you do wild edible plants, you can go out and you can forage some plants. If you get some dried meat or something like that, or tofu or whatever, you know, you're into for your protein, you can kind of mix it together. And you can make something that feels like a meal over a bed of uh, ramen noodles. And it's nice to have something warm in your, in your stomach too. We've got more tea. Again, tea is a really great asset. Tea, tea. Um, okay, this is something uh, a little bit different. This thing does have a bit of a shelf life. Should we talk about this? Uh, this is granola. Granola. Uh, we do a lot of granola for breakfast cereal. Uh, take a little bit of granola, take a little bit of uh, just unflavored rolled oats, mix it together, put some milk in there, and uh, that's what a lot, oftentimes we'll do for breakfast. This stuff does go rancid, though. Uh, that said, um, you know, I've gone a couple of years easy over expiration, but I have had some granola go bad. You open up the container and you can kind of smell that rancid oil smell. Um, I've still eaten some of it that way. It didn't make me sick or anything. Uh, but, you know, because it's not like it has a ton of oil in, in it or anything. But, um, yeah, that's something to think about. If, if you're going to bulk buy granola, you know, just be aware it, 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 it can go bad. Uh, over here, more kind of seasoning stuff. This is all Indian simmer sauces. Uh, right in the front here is some sag. It's great to mix in with rice, and it takes just bland rice and turns it into something that tastes like a palatable meal. Uh, down here, I mentioned that uh, you know most of the people in my family are mostly vegetarian. Uh, I do a little bit of bird. This is uh, just some uh, uh, turkey, uh, kind of uh, cured turkey sticks. I, I started getting into, I, I've always done fish, but I started getting into bird after I built this house. I had a lot of injuries. Uh, you know, I was always kind of pulling something, straining something, and either because I just didn't have the time uh, to properly prepare enough vegetarian meals for myself, or whatever it was, I, I felt like I just needed to get more protein into my body. That's when I really started getting into this stuff, and I added just a little bit, uh, well, this is, each stick is what, eight grams. I, I added eight grams of, of bird protein to my diet per day, and I feel like I have a lot less injuries. I'm still mostly vegetarian, but I added that in, and I feel like, you know, my joints feel a little stronger when I grab things. I'm not like, ah, whatever, because, um, I don't know, it might come as a surprise to some people, but when you build an entire house yourself, it, you know, there's some injuries there. So, uh, so I, I needed some way of kind of recuperating my body. So that's when I added that. But it also has a reasonably long shelf life. Though I have had some even before expiration uh, that had gone bad. So you always got to look at things, even if it's pre-expiration date. One of these, they're in the little plastic wrappers. The wrapper was kind of expanded with gas and I was like there's something suspect about that let's open that up yep okay that one's gone so always use your common sense if something uh, smells and especially if it tastes like there's something up with it you know you, you don't I mean unless you got nothing else to eat you know be careful because you can make yourself pretty sick you gotta watch out for that okay down here uh, what we have is spices and spices here two entire bins full of all different types of spices there's basil there's oregano there's turmeric, um, there's curry powders, all sorts of things, so that you can take those awful bland ingredients and turn them into something that people aren't going to be vomiting up. Uh, here's a whole baking bin, uh, you know, baking powders and things of that nature, dry, uh, dry milk, uh, um, baking sodas, all that kind of stuff related to baking, and we put it in the bin, keep it all together. All right, over here, more baking stuff, but these are like the uh, easy how-to mixes. These are great, like, you know, just if you want to do family time, all you have to say is you want to do a chocolate chip cookie mix. And uh, kids seem to be really into that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's a great way of kind of keeping the family together. And also, um, you know, it's a nice treat. If you're ever in a situation where you couldn't get out, you have that. And people feel like, ah, oh, you know, warm chocolate chip cookies. All right. Um, now we're going to talk about the bottom. The bottom areas. And these are kind of like the... This is like the base of the pyramid, both literally and figuratively. Down here is where we have all of our calories. Uh, we've got basmati rice, rolled oats. Um, these, uh, these bins here, and I'll show you what I'm using here. These are pet food containers. They are FDA approved for uh, use for human food, for what that's worth. You know? um, but, you know, I'm not going to put soup in here. I'm not going to put like, like uh, some, some kind of liquid that's going to like turn into plastic soup or anything. But dry ingredients, I personally feel comfortable with it. If you want, you know, you could try to get everything into glass containers. You know, you can get a bunch of these and you can put all your grains in them. That's an awful lot of jars. That's an awful lot of shatter. Uh, it, it, it takes up an awful lot of space. So for me, I, I feel like it's an okay compromise. I do the plastic. I'm, you know, 
would I love it if I could get a giant glass container just like this? Yeah, that'd be great, but I don't have like 400 bucks for whatever that would cost to, to purchase something like that. So I use these containers, but I, I just use them for dry things. I'm not going to open this to demo it. Um, uh, and that in itself is a demo that you want to be careful whenever you open these. You don't want to just do it willy-nilly whenever you, you feel like it. You want to go into these. Uh, I've got scoops in here, like, uh, you know, just like large uh, scoops you use for, you know, flour, food, things of that nature. Um, I go into here. I have another uh, bin that is out in the kitchen. I take this. I fill the bin. I don't want to have hairs falling in it. I don't want to have, like, dried skin falling in it. Uh, I don't want to get extra humidity in here. And I scoop out what I need, put it in the other container, and then reseal the, uh, this. You want to have this open as little as possible. What I have in here, like I said, is white flour, but also a couple desiccant packets, the food-grade ones uh, that I keep in here. Just if there's extra moisture, they're going to absorb it. Uh, and what uh, I mentioned that this is a 28-inch deep shelf. These are... Uh, no more than 14 inches, so I can fit two of them, front and back. The front one is the active one. The one in the back is the one that's been completely um, refilled. I'm not sure it's a little dark back there. You guys can take my word for it. So what I do is, once this one gets completely emptied, I'm going to reorder white flour, and I'll fill it up in here. This one in the back slides out to the front. This one goes behind it, and then I kind of rotate that way. With flour in particular, I actually, I, I have more than two white flowers. There's this front white flower, the back white flower, and then I've got another row of flowers right here, because I go through a lot of flour. We do a lot of, you know, pizza bread making, regular bread making. I use a lot of flour. So I've, all in all, white flour, wheat flour, and then a mix of the two. Going back, we've got six tubs of these, and each one of these tubs holds about 50 pounds of flour. So that is... 300 pounds of flour right here, give or take. Um, so flour is a great prep. Uh, people are going to tell you, if you get into this, that if you're going to do flour, what you really want to do is in flour, what you want to do is wheat berries. Now wheat berries, what that means is it's the it's the grain that gets ground into flour. That threw me at the beginning. I'm like, what the, what the fuck is a wheat berry? Uh, like berries that grow off of it? It's not that. It's a grain. It, it, they, it just means the wheat grain. Um, People are going to tell you you should get the wheat berries, the wheat grain, and then grind the stuff down just before you use it. The reason for that, and it's true, is that wheat berries have a longer shelf life than flour. Once you crack the berry, you're letting gases and moisture and stuff into the inner seed, and it's going to result in earlier spoilage. That's 100% true. But it's not that important because this stuff here, uh, you know, I bought back in 2019. I'm using it now. It's time of this recording. It's two years later. Uh, I've had flour that's been, I think, four, maybe even five years old, and it's been fine. So it's true you're going to get longer shelf life if you do the uncracked uh, wheat berries. But, I mean, what, are you going to like, go down to your local like, you know, uh, grocery store and be like, where do you keep your wheat berries? I, people don't sell wheat berries. You go to like a, a special supplier or something like that. I mean, they're, they're all over the place, obviously. An idiot like me was able to source them. But, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to just get, go out and get flour. And it lasts a long time. And now, if you want to do like a 30-year emergency stash that you're not going to rotate through, and I would highly recommend against that, it's good. Use your pantry. Don't just create an emergency stash. Put it away and never think about it again. Use it. Constantly rotate through it. It's going to do a bunch of things. It's going to keep your food fresh, and it's going to make it so that your body is used to eating that kind of food. You don't want to be in an emergency situation where you're eat, used to eating diet A, and then the shit hits the fan, and diet A ends, and then you're on diet B. That's good. I mean, it's going to give you uh, intestinal upset and everything. It's like when, when a vegetarians uh, try eating meat, they're like, oh, man, it sits like a rock in your stomach. When uh, non-vegetarians try vegetarian diet, they're like, oh, I'm all full of gas and everything. It's not because the meat-eating diet is, is, you know, the vegetarians will say, oh, it's because meat's bad for you or whatever, you know. Obviously, to some degree, I have sympathies for that because I'm a vegetarian. And it's not like the, you know, the media just say, like, oh, vegetarianism, is, it, it's horrible. I got, I got all sick when I tried to do it. It's not because one's bad, although, again, I have my sympathies for one versus the other. But it's because they're different. And if you jump from one thing to the other, all your stomach ecology has to change around. So if you're in a situation where there's an emergency event that happens and you drop your old diet and you get the stress of this emergency situation and you got a new diet uh, happening... 
that's not a recipe for you know great things happening. So it's great to be constantly eating the kind of stuff that you would be eating in a crisis, so that it's not yet another change that you have to you know endure through. Okay, let's slide down here a little bit more. I've got some chia seeds back here. I think my uh, infamous cashews. No, actually they're over here. Uh, back here. What else do we got? Well, I've got pinto beans here. Here we get into the vegetarian stuff. Pinto beans. There's a bunch of rice here. I've got beans kind of hidden throughout. Pinto beans are good. Black beans are good. In fact, I've never run across a dried bean that didn't store totally well. I've never had any issues with any of that. I have once, on one occasion, now that I'm next to the white basmati rice, I have had one instance once where weevils got into some rice that I had. I was being an idiot. I, if you've ever seen the film Amelie, there's a scene in Amelie where uh, there's like a, a vendor selling uh, beans and, and she like takes her hand, she like reaches them into the beans and, it, and she's all like, oh, it's such a wonderful feeling, except she says it in French and probably says it more eloquently than I just did. Um, and it is kind of a neat feeling. Uh, so uh, when I would get rices, I'd get like, you know, white rice and brown rice and black volcano rice and pink Madagascar rice, and I'd mix them all together. I thought it was the most beautiful mix. You just get your hand in there, and it's just this wonderful feeling. Yeah, well, one of those rices that I added to the mix must have had, like, a weevil egg in it or two, and they spread through everything. And that's a lesson. When you are getting stuff, compartmentalize it, segregate it. Segregation is not cool in civil society. It's really great for your pantry. You want to keep things separated, because if you get one thing that has weevils in it, it's going to spread to everywhere. So uh, my solution to that wasn't to not eat the rice. What I did is I took the rice, I put it in my hot car where they say, don't leave your kids or your dogs in the hot car because it'll kill them. Well, I crossed my fingers and hoped it would kill the weevils too, and it did. Uh, it killed all the weevils. I did some research, found out that there was nothing particularly bad about eating their excrement, and I finished up the rest of the rice and had a little bit of weevil protein in it. Um, ideally, you wouldn't aim for that, though. So as you're bringing stuff into your house, don't go mixing stuff being a meathead like I did. Keep stuff separate. Keep stuff uh, uh, you know, broken up by when you bought it so that if you do get something coming into your house, and it, I don't think it happens often in my entire history, one story. Uh, but if it does happen, it's not going to hit everything. Okay, let's uh, kind of pop back here. we got one more run here, and then you guys are more of an expert on my pantry than I am. Because I don't remember anything I just said. Oh, wait, here is something that was... It said that it used to be worth its weight in gold, though I don't know whether that's true or not. Though I do know that in Africa, people used to trade this for gold in sub-Saharan Africa. Back, I think it was like during the, the Cameroon Empire. Is that the name of it? It doesn't really matter what the name of it is. Anyway, very important item, salt. This thing is entirely filled with salt, and salt is heavy. Salt is a rock. Salt has no expiration date because it is a rock. It's just a mineral. Nothing's going to happen to it. The only thing that could possibly happen to it is if you get humidity in there, and it can make it feel like a rock you have to pick through. Keep it dry so that it doesn't turn into one giant chunk. Salt, super important item. Make sure you stock that. I've got this. I've got another one down there right next to it because I like to make sure that I confuse myself when I'm doing cooking is sugar, which looks just like salt. So why not put them next to each other so you can confuse yourself when you're trying to find one versus the other. Sugar, great item for cooking, great item for trading. Next to that, I don't have to pull all these out. We've got cornmeal. Uh, cornmeal is a good food item. Also, if you do bread baking, cornmeal is great for kind of sprinkling down to make sure your bread doesn't stick to the bottom of the, the pan. Very useful item. More cane sugar here. Here is in-shell salted peanut. This one was from uh, five years ago. I'm, I am gonna open this one up and I'll just I'll give it a smell. Yeah, it's rancid. So, I, you know, I, I, I gave them one last try. You know, I think these are going to be for the squirrels. Peanuts, not super successful. We've got some more rice over here, brown, brown rice, more peanuts. I don't know why I was on a peanut buying kick. I think I didn't like the idea that they couldn't store peanuts. Peanuts are all over the place. Uh, here are beans. Uh, but you know what? It's bait. You know, if you're a hunter, you want to get squirrels. I'm sorry, Amber. But, uh, you know, it, everything's useful for something. In fact, a lot of my rancid peanut butter that I made a while ago using this stuff. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a long, rich history with peanuts. Uh, I still use it for baiting mouse traps. I have a heart mouse traps, and I think the best uh, bait for mice is peanut butter. So I don't use my good peanut butter. I use my rancid peanut butter from this old junk to bait mouse traps so I can catch mice. And we, we do catch and release so they don't eat up our cars. Uh, but, you know, everything has some kind of a use, so it's good to kind of keep it around. 
Uh, lots of beans here, cashews under here. In fact, I'm just gonna do a, a smell test with the cashews right here in front of you. A lot of these uh, containers, by the way, I got from an old restaurant. They were just getting rid of them. Uh, you know, I, I purchased these things here, but these uh, these buckets and this kind of stuff, this used to have Kalamata olives in it. I'm just going to smell this one, see if the cashews, yeah, smell totally fine. And face up so it doesn't get dirty. Yeah, totally fine. And these things are... These things are actually so old that they predate me even dating things. I just wrote cashews on it. It was before I was smart enough to put dates on things. Those things are like forever ago. We've got chickpeas. That's a, a really great protein. Uh, you know, you can just boil those up and you can uh, mix them with all sorts of things. Black eyed peas. Again, all this stuff. I've never had any problems with it going bad. Tons of salt. And you know, if you're going to buy salt and have it in giant containers, do yourself a favor and get some small containers too because ain't nobody want to go into that if you can have the option to go into something like this. So, uh, you know, that's for emergencies, but buy a bunch of these too, because it's like, it's a lot more convenient. Uh, over here, oh, well, this is just kind of a fun thing, some seaweed snacks. Quinoa, another grain, high in protein. Quinoa, quinoa, grain, high in protein. So that is our pantry. One of the great things about putting a pantry together, I know many of you guys are thinking, like, you know, if there's ever, like, an SHGF situation, you know, I can have the food at my house, and I don't, or I don't have to... You know, uh, go out if, like, the uh, grocery stores are mobbed with people or, you know, whatever. It's like it has all those kind of, like, emergency situation benefits. But another great benefit is that everything you see in here, pretty much, I bought on sale. Uh, or I bought, uh, and or I bought in some kind of a bulk quantity. And when you buy stuff on sale and when you're buying stuff bulk, you're saving a lot of money. So not only does a pantry give you access to food that you might have trouble getting, uh, you know, during some kind of a situation, having a pantry like this and getting used to using it is going to save you a bunch of money on buying food. Granted, you know, occasionally you have some spoilage. You, you, you're dumbass and you buy a bunch of peanuts and you, you learn a lesson that way. And I guess, you, you know, that, that that's the cost of education. But mostly, the stuff in here, everything is like, you know, it's 20% down or, you know, or half price or whatever. So you, you save an enormous amount of money doing something like this. So not only is it a benefit to you in emergency, Having something like this is a benefit to you during your ordinary life. I hope that this has been a helpful walkthrough for you. Um, if you're interested in doing something like this, if, you, if there's anything that I didn't address, please shoot me a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And I'm one of those people that is not afraid to say I don't know. So if I don't know the answer to the question, I'm not going to BS you and give you a bunch of like, you know, whatever, or like, you know, Google it and try to find out and use somebody else's answer. If I don't have experience on it, I'll just be honest. I'll say I don't know about that. But if I do, I'm always happy to share. So I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.